Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode three of a show that I hope has by now made you cup your balls at least once to check if everything's okay down there. If not, check now. I'm checking my balls constantly, Joe. <laughs> it's the only place you can work where it's all right to have your hand on your pants. When you have cancer, you mean? No, being my co-host of this podcast. That's why you can never see my hands. They're always on my balls. <laughs> Welcome back to the most cancerous show online, people. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Joseph. How are you? Well, still got cancer, but not doing too bad still, I'd say. Thanks for watching and for the feedback on episode two. Uh, the episodes are going to keep coming, so please share this with anybody you know. If you like it, like it, share it, subscribe. <laughs> I'm really bad at Doing this kind of promo stuff? You're nailing this, Joe. Am I? Am I really? I, I've stopped listening to you a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> For any new listeners, uh, in case you're just jumping in, this is the story of Joe's uh, road towards uh, recovery during some hurdles of chemo. Have you felt uh, chemotional? <laughs> I haven't used that word yet, but why not? Why not? Yeah, I guess I have. More seriously, no? No? I've been staying positive, and I haven't had the real dark emotional thing side one could expect, if that's what you're talking about. Yet. Yet. Just so people know, I don't know if we've told them earlier, but we met at film school, and we share a common love of film and TV and story and narrative and all that stuff. And uh, every time I make something, and this is something, I think of a narrative structure. So we had the original that everyone loved, the first episode, The Humor and the Tumor, and uh, then we made Ball of Fame, uh, which took it a bit too far, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think there might have been a few more jokes and less less reality in it. Maybe I don't know. I'll not, that's not quite the right word, but maybe more jokes and less story. Because the thing is, the first episode had a month to talk about. But there are no good sequels. We tried to push it. We might have pushed it too far. But now it's turning into a trilogy, so now we can return with a vengeance. As long as I don't have to die hard first. Psh. Funny. <laughs> so as Joe eloquently mentioned in the opening, remember to cup your balls. This is a show about cancer and cancer awareness. We have to tell people to check themselves before they wreck themselves. Am I right, Joe? Absolutely, absolutely. I would have rather have figured this out sooner. So check yourselves, check your boyfriends, check your brother, check your dad. I don't know. Check everybody. But like ask for... Their permission first. So that, <laughs> so that tiny little lump might be something gross and horrible. Don't underestimate the power of the cancer. No, absolutely. Because if this had been found out sooner, it would have been a lot quicker. It could have been in and out in a day. They cut snip, snip, and you're good. And there's no other stuff, no chemo, no anything. So, yeah, don't forget to check yourselves. It would have been a really boring podcast, though. That's probably true. So the last time we spoke, you were ready to start the second round of chemo, but first you uh, you had the Petonk tournament. Can you first remind people what Petonk is? <laughs> well, Petonk is is basically like boccia or lawn balls. You got a little ball, you throw it, and then you got a bigger ball, and you try and get as close as possible to the little ball with it. I've played this for many years. I didn't just start playing because I got ball cancer and said, hey, this would be funny. That would be funny, though. <laughs> well, it would be. <laughs> It would be, I guess, even funnier if you just imagine that I've been planning this joke for 20 years. That's why I've been getting good at it. It's just in case I get ball cancer. I better learn how to play. But so in town here where I, where I live, there was a petanque tournament last Sunday. Petanque, which is also called bool, basically just <laughs> balls. So we went to play balls. And one of the guys there was the actual title holder of the world champion ball player. Is he Swiss? He is actually, I think he's half French, perhaps, but he lives in Geneva. Are there any countries in the world that doesn't speak French who play petanque? Thailand are pretty good. I'm not even joking. For some reason in Thailand, I think they play in the army. Before we start your whole chemo adventure, uh, I heard your dad criticized your lack of knowledge about anatomy. Well, yeah, in the last episode, I was trying to explain to you how they would go in and get something through my abdomen. And it wasn't just that I have a lack of knowledge of, of anatomy. It's also that I'm a bit of an idiot that couldn't think of a word. Because <laughs> first of all, it would have been easier if when I was explaining that, the word waste would have come to mind. 
And that's why I started saying, like, looking down and you're in the, the waist would not come to the mind. So anyway, in this past month since this has happened, I've been to the doctors and been around hospitals a lot more than in the 40 years prior to that that I lived. I'm not a medical expert. I don't know much about all this shit. Which is odd, because I'm, I'm pretty sure all the viewers thought you were a doctor. Yes, I'm sure. Joe's Anatomy at <laughs> 8 on NBC. <laughs> But so no, I don't really know what's going on, and I'm learning as I go along, so I probably will make more mistakes or say some things that are not quite exactly right. I'm sure some people in my situation would go and read the science and go deep into the stuff and try and understand everything. I don't feel that's necessarily that useful to me. And if I say stuff that's wrong, please correct me and I'll try it next time. This is the stuff that's going to cut our balls off. You know that. We're going to say something wrong. People are going to die. The YouTube message board and Reddit, whatever it's called, is going to burn up and we'll be villains. Well, you do say it's going to cut our balls off. At least I only have one to go. Although we did learn that you have two. Only one is sweet, sweet silicone. (laughs) I have no idea whether or not silicone is sweet. I kind of want it to be. What does your hair look like, by the way? My hair still hasn't actually fallen out. Mine is growing back at rapid pace. I see that. I can't tell. I don't think any of it's any of it has fallen off yet. And I was telling the nurses, maybe I actually uh, shaved it off for nothing. And they both looked at me and said, no, you didn't. Don't worry. It's going to fall off. So apparently it is going to fall off soon. So we've established you're not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm very disappointed to learn that, but you know, I'm getting all my top medical knowledge from you, my friend, and uh, you've been serving me baloney. 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 Oh, so cheap, yet so rich. <laughs> let's, uh, let's start with the chemo journey. Was the second round more explosive than the first? Like a good sequel? If I had to compare it to a sequel, it wasn't really like going from alien to aliens. Was it... Home Alone and then Home Alone Alone in New York? Yeah, sort of. It was, I guess it was more that. It was like Home Alone and like Home Alone in the oncology ward. Except I wasn't alone because there were other patients. This whole week was in, uh, as an outpatient. And so it's quite a different experience because you go in there at 8.30 in the morning and you're out by about 4. And so I'd go in there at 8.30 and basically have to get my blood pressure taken, my temperature taken. Uh, they weigh you when you come in. Then hook you up on the Monday, hook my portacath up to my IV stand. Philippe. Philippe, exactly. And then basically I sit there all day until four o'clock. Most of the time just being hydrated, they're giving me water. Are you encouraged to drink all the time as well, in addition to the fluids? Yeah, because they give me basically three liters of uh, saline solution, of, of, of fluids a day. And they encourage me to drink a bit more than usual too. So I ended up, I would drink maybe two liters a day and get three injected in me. So what are you encouraged to drink? Only water or anything? No, they basically said anything. I mean, water is good, but to add all the fluids, they give me coffee in there. I can have a glass of milk in the morning. It can be tea. If I had a soup at lunch, that counts as fluids. But I did mainly drink water, really. And tequila shots. No, I didn't have any tequila shots, at least not at the oncology ward. So you mentioned there were other patients there. Well, yeah, of course, this time, that's what was quite different also, is at the hospital, I was in a room, I shared a room with with an elderly gentleman who wasn't a cancer patient, it was just another, I was just in the general population of the hospital. And here there is sort of the little bit different thing that it's an oncology ward, so you're suddenly in this, this building and you know that, well, all the other patients you see around, they're all there for the same reason you are. Obviously not necessarily the, the, the same cancer. There's different ones, and everybody seems to be doing different treatments. Were you the youngest? Probably not quite. I think there was a woman who looked to be a little bit younger than me, but not much. But otherwise, pretty much, I was on the lower end of the spectrum, that's for sure. There was one gentleman on Friday who was in there, and he was in pretty good mood. I don't know what they were doing. He wasn't there for long. He was there for 20 minutes, but he had a smile on his face, made a few jokes, talked about the weather, then left. Okay. And before that, there was another one that was a bit weird, or funny, but in a, like, funny, weird, not funny, haha, is the first time, sort of, I actually did speak to a woman sitting next to me in the bed, and who's like, so, what kind of cancer do you have? And so I was like, oh, I've got testicle cancer, my left testicle. She's like, ah. And so I was like, how about you? And she said, oh, I got cancer in my breast. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty hard, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And that was sort of it. We didn't actually go very far with that conversation that day, but it was sort of the first time I had that cancer to cancer conversation, which just is a bit weird. Do they give you food as well, or is it only fluids? No, they give me food. I had my lunch during my chemo basically every day. Bring me a sandwich, fruit salad, a yogurt, some, some stuff. Yeah, it was good. What about the staff? Are they nice, or are they all like evil people? From what I've gathered these past few weeks, I mean, all these people working as nurses are people that have sort of have some kind of a calling, I think, to want to do this and do it so well. But it does really feel like the, the ones in oncology are even more well-chosen or something, because I guess it is a hard thing to go through even as a nurse. You're seeing all these patients. Some of them don't make it out. Some of them do. And so they're really, really all extremely compassionate people. They're all pretty funny, and I'm getting along with them a lot. I even got complimented. One of them told me the other day on Friday that I should give lessons on, a, on how to be an outstanding patient. Because you're saying, well, she gets in in the morning and I've already weighed myself and I'm waiting and I've already brought my T-shirt up so she can plug me in. And I've sort of done everything. And she's like, well, you should, you should tell everybody else how to do this. And it, it sort of makes me feel a little bad almost because it's not hard to be optimistic and have a smile on your face. Isn't that the hardest thing? Well, not when I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, but you're still getting compliments from everyone saying you're so positive. Yeah. Staying positive is really hard. Uh, that's apparently. I've never had cancer as far as I know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I spoke to more doctors and more nurses after showing them episode two. And they were all sitting there like, ah, humor. My God, what you can do with humor. And I was like, what about bad humor? Because that's what we're doing. And they're like, yeah, that works too. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. I'm, I'm sure and I've spoken to friends about this too, that staying positive and making jokes is helping me stay positive. It's like a never-ending circle. But it is pretty easy to stay positive when I'm feeling pretty good. And I do realize that this isn't the case of everybody. So that I, I, it's sort of weird. I, I know I guess I'm unlucky to have uh, contracted this. Yeah. But I do feel pretty lucky so far about how well it's going and about how my version of it is and how I'm getting an easy version of this, at least so far. You think you're going to get survivor's guilt if people around you that you notice will die in the oncology ward? I don't know. I guess that'll depend if I survive. That's given, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I probably would a little bit. I'd be happy to be alive, but yeah, it's, I mean... It is weird. Taking and it's, it's I'm still, as I said at the beginning of this thing, I'm not an expert, but I can tell everybody has having a, a different battle, a different thing. It's a different way, and mine seems not too bad. So I, yeah, I, I would wish other people could have one like me. I was thinking we should move over to a segment that will piss people off. It just might, because it's true. We talked about all the, the, the water and all the fluids that I injected and drank during these five days. But as you know, uh, what goes in must come out, I guess. This is true. And I've rarely spent a week in my life where urine was so much the center of, of like my life. I basically spent these five days either peeing, drinking in order to pee, getting injected so I could pee, thinking, hmm, should I go pee? Talking about my pee and being congratulated about how much I peed. <laughs> Because no, you pee a lot when you're drinking so much fluid. I can imagine, yeah. Did it make you feel pissy? Like, like in a pissy mood? A little bit, a little bit. I mean, it's like on the, on the end of the week, it's every 20 minutes you're getting up to go to the bathroom. Wouldn't it be better to just hook you up to one of those thingies that you can just let it go, let it go, let it go? Like the song? Yeah. I haven't seen the movie. Me neither. And it's based on Norway. It's based on Norway. Frozen. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's Disney's most uh, profitable film of all time. Huh, it's also what's happened to my sperm. <laughs> By the way, call back to the sperm. Did they tell you how many potential random ladies you can impregnate with your frozen sperm? Well, I think there's at least four or five mouthfuls. <laughs> Swallow that mouthful, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but these are just for me, these kids. Other people aren't going to... It's not like I'm giving the sperm away. I, ju I just... I don't know much about sperm, obviously, because I'm a moron, and I'm also not a doctor, just like you. But I was just wondering, you gave a certain amount 
And statistically, how many kids, how many attempts will that lead to? I have no idea. I know I had to give it twice to uh, increase the, the odds that it would work. But I don't think it's meant to like last for, if I want to have a kid every year for the next 40 years, I don't think that'll work. So you spent the majority of every day pissing. What did you do at night? I've been sort of off and on staying at my parents' house. It's been great this, uh, since this started. And so I came to their house, but also went to see some friends. And I, I, I went out and sort of lived my life, so to speak. I, I went out to a friend's 45th birthday party by the lake. Only problem is this month of August has been like the worst one I can remember since eons. And it was pissing down with rain. Did the weather help you when you were trying to piss in the daytime? Like the sound of drizzling water? <laughs> Probably. More seriously, I was pretty happy to actually be... To have crappy weather when you're spending the day in the hospital. It's nicer than having the sun shining and it being hot and whatever. So I, I was fine with it being crappy. Would have been nice if the sun had cleared up a little bit for the barbecue maybe though. What about your uh, immune system? Well, yeah. Let's talk about it, Joe. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, so yeah, my immune system, apparently, I don't necessarily feel particularly weak. But I have been told, and I know that the, 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 the chemo drugs I'm taking don't just attack the bad cells, they attack the good cells. Just long story short, basically your immune system uh, is weaker, so you have to be more careful. And which I'm doing, and I mean, I, I'm going out and I'm trying to live my life, but I'm not being an idiot. And like I've been told my doctor, I'm allowed to have a drink or two, uh, an alcoholic drink or two. But I haven't been going out and having 12, I'll have maybe a glass of wine, and then I had a couple of non-alcoholic beers, and I, I try to sit down a lot, and I'm not, like, dancing and standing in the middle of the crowd and people surfing. Do your friends question your decision to drink every time you take a sip? It's just like, oh, Joe, 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 what are you doing? There's a little bit of that. First, are you really allowed to? And I've said, yes, I've asked my doctor, and I specifically asked, obviously, is it going to have any, any effect on the treatment? Because, I mean, if he says zero drops of alcohol is better tomorrow, I will stop tomorrow. But my doctor also said, no, you can have a drink or two. It's nice to relax. Obviously, don't go overboard. And, but it's true that a lot of people have asked me every time they see me, are you really allowed to do that? I say, yes, don't worry. I'm being surrounded by experts. Well, it's a good thing your friends are sort of overprotective. Well, absolutely. They've all been really nice. I mean, then last night I had dinner at another friend's house and most of them are vaccinated. But he made sure that Everybody who came to the dinner got a shot or had been <laughs> vaccinated, rather. Like a shot? <laughs> no, yeah. I'll try that again. Last night I went to a friend's house for dinner and he was really nice because uh, he made sure everybody there was either vaccinated or had just done a test in the day to sort of keep me safe. And all my friends have been very supportive, protective, but also letting me live my life. They're not hanging around. That is good to hear. Uh, how about side effects? Have you felt any more side effects now that you're, you have more cancer in your veins? No, not more cancer, more chemo, more poison. Hopefully less cancer. I don't know yet, but hopefully less cancer, more, more poison. I guess that's about true. Well, remember last week I told you I didn't know if it was side effects or a stomach ache, stomach ache or something. Yeah. And I think it probably was the start of side effects because I had to have, which I've read is another one, some acid, acid reflex on and off these past few evenings. Nothing at all unbearable. It gets me belching a little bit. Had me hiccup a bit the other night for a minute or two. So that's the only side effects? Yeah. How's your back? Yeah. I've had no back pain at all since the start now, since I've had the testicle removed. Was it only the fact that your ball was so heavy that your spine became crooked? Hopefully not, but, but yeah, my, my doctor friend did say that there was a pretty good chance that part of the pain, at least, was just radiating from the testicle. Hence, removing it would bring that pain down. But I do still have something pushing against my, my uh, spine. Medically speaking, I did make my first mistake yesterday. What'd you do? I don't know if it was my first mistake. but Probably not, considering your dad called you a fucking idiot after seeing the last episode. He doesn't swear. Gosh darn idiot. <laughs> he just said my anatomy wasn't perfect in a nice way. But anyway, uh, so after the five days of chemo, and I had to do this the same thing after the first session... I was supposed to give myself a shot the next day. Give yourself a shot? Yeah. In the thingy? No, 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 no. Just in my, in my, in my blubber, in my fat, in my stomach. You're supposed to insert a syringe into yourself like a Japanese suicide? 
A little bit, but I've done this before at the beginning of my treatment because for the first two weeks of treatment, I had to take anti-clotting drugs. It's very simple. I did it for two weeks in a row and you just press down and you can't even hurt yourself and everything goes in, except I did something wrong this time. And so this is an injection I was supposed to do after the, after the, the, the five days of chemo to basically start bringing up my white blood cell count. Okay. And I got ready yesterday morning to do this shot did my thing, thought everything would go fine, and then did something wrong and realized I put at least half of the, the drug onto my shorts rather than into my belly. So your belly rejected the drugs. No, I just sort of moved weirdly, and, and I, I don't know. Anyway, I did a stupid thing and then thought, hmm, that can't be good. They told me I got to take this one little thing, there's six milliliters, six milliliters, I think it was, I don't know how much is next to me. I probably need to call someone. So and the oncology ward is closed on weekends. So I called the hospital, but I got through pretty quickly actually to my actual oncologist who called me back. Wasn't worried at all, which was good to hear. On a scale from 2 to 13.8, how much were you in panic when you fucked that shit up? I'm pretty low, but four or five. I was at my parents' house. And nobody here was panicked either. Well, you have told them not to care about you. I didn't say not to care. I said not to... I said laugh a little bit. Fair. But, uh, yeah, a little bit. And I mean, a little bit. I thought pretty quickly, well, that was really stupid because everything's going well so far. And I figure it's also probably because I'm doing everything I'm told the way I should. So I did feel sort of stupid to, oh, no, this is the first thing I've done wrong. I hope it doesn't make the side effects worse, make things last longer, do whatever, I don't know. So are you regretting not having been a heroin addict for the last 20 years, so you know how to deal with syringes? Not really. I saw train spotting. It didn't make me want to want to do that, no. Fair. Not so much. Fair. These are a lot easier to inject, I think, than this kind of horrible stuff they look, except that I'm an idiot, because these are really like idiot-proof injections. And I proved I was an idiot, I guess. What's idiot in French again? Idiot. With a T that's silent, or... Exactly, unlike you. <laughs> I'm just going to mute my mic and you can finish this shit off. <laughs> uh, no, I can't trust you to finish something. You can't even put a syringe in your own belly. Uh, so, Joe, what's next? What's coming up? What's on the horizon? What are you here to plug? Let's hear it. That camera, that camera, that camera. Okay, hot ones. In two weeks, in ten days... I get PET scan number two. At the very beginning, before starting the chemo, I got a PET scan, which they use to then compare this one to, to see if the chemo's working. So for me, who is an idiot, uh, <laughs> what is a PET scan again? PET is an acronym that means positronic, positron emissions tomography scan, which I can't explain what that does. It's a kind of scan, like an MRI one. There are different ones that work differently. I do not know what they do differently. But when I did it last time, it took about 45 minutes. I lay in a thing. It took pictures of me all the way along. It's a thing that makes a lot of noise, right? It makes a little bit of noise. It doesn't make as much as I thought from the movies. But it, yeah, it does sort of do the clunky things and it moves and you have to stay perfectly still. It's pretty horrible and boring, certainly. And so they did one right before chemo that only served to, to be a comparison. And so now in 10 days, I do a second one. And they hold them up to the light, I guess, and say, hey, look, this thing's disappearing. This is great. Or it's not. So this is the most exciting moment yet. Yeah, it's the first actual news. It's exactly. It's the first, it'll be the first actual news. I know that I'm taking the chemo well, that my blood is uh, working, that my body's not rejecting it. But is it actually working on the, on the cancer? We don't really know yet. Are you fully vaccinated? Absolutely fully vaccinated. I had more shots than I have balls. Nice. And second question, when you're filled up to the brim with fluids and you're maximum hydrated, do you feel lightheaded and kind of floozy? <laughs> no, not really. I don't think I ever got filled up to the maximum quantity. I mean, as I said, that stuff makes you want to pee. I was going every 20 minutes. So it was like only up to my ankles by then. Do you have a competition with yourself to see how long you can, like, do you keep track of 21 minutes, 18 minutes? No, but I keep track of, of every quantity I peed after. So I could be like, that was the biggest one of the day. Do you have, like, milk bottles with urine, like Howard Hughes style, that you're lining up on your shelf? 
No, well, not quite. They have a special bottle that's made for this that you use to measure it, and that then you write down on a piece of paper every time you use it so they can add it up at the end. That makes sense. But, I mean, considering you're the weird patient who wanted to keep his testicle, I'm thinking maybe you're the weird patient who wants to keep all his pee. No, just the testicle, and I'm still working on that for those who watched last week. We're looking forward, and we're horrified to see your fake prop ball. Yeah, I can understand that. So, like Joe mentioned in the beginning, make sure to check yourselves. We're uh, really trying to raise cancer awareness. People have done it before, but it can't be mentioned enough. Well, they haven't been that good. It's still here. But I mean, one in three get cancer of everyone, statistically. Yeah, that sounds about right. My dad, the doctor, said that... uh, That sounds weird. My dad said... The doctor said that uh, eventually, at the end, uh, 100% of all men get prostate cancer. So that kind of fucks up the, the odds of one in three. So you're just trying to tell me that I'm, I'm bound to get another cancer after this one? Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for that. But I mean, it's far down the line and it most likely won't kill you. But every old person at some point, every old guy will get prostate cancer. You're welcome. But you mean they won't even necessarily know it because they'll be so old and they'll never realize. Yes, and they'll have a bunch of other shit that's killing them. Their children and their mortgages. <laughs> AIDS. <laughs> Fun things to look forward to. <laughs> and maybe COVID. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a positive end note. Should we maybe crank up the vibe? I've never seen a trilogy end this, uh, this horribly. Until next time. So let's wrap this up. Remember to cup your balls, people, or cup whatever you have that needs cupping. Whatever it is, just cups. <laughs> uh, Touch yes, yourselves. Uh, your own. With consent. Just do it. You know what we're saying. You know what we're trying to tell you. Don't make this more awkward than it needs to be. Speaking of which, we're not even talking about that, so why should I say speaking of which? (laughs) These episodes, they don't have a specific date or a specific time because we're trying to slot them in between the cancer and the chemo and the spine and Joe's off like petonk tournaments and cheese eating frumpy (laughs) neighbors and all that stuff. Also, I have a real job. He has a real job. His job is having cancer. Mine is something that pays. This is horrible. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. Uh, So yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna continue releasing these. I know there are some people out there who hate us, and that fuels me to carry on. Uh, Hopefully, you too, Joe. I'm gonna carry on as long as I can. That's for sure. And as you as you say, there'll be more episodes. uh, Hopefully, you're putting the can in cancer. Yes, I can, sir. Uh, all right. So, uh, très bien. Uh, merci, mon ami. Uh, au revoir. Au revoir. Et until next time. Snip, snip. Okay, let's cut it.